Happy Friday, happy oh. Friday, happy Friday, everybody. Woo. Welcome to Let's Talk Kentucky. <laughs> I'm your host and moderator, Sherelle Roberts, and boy, am I glad to be here. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> We're glad you're here. Yay! We're joined by the Let's Talk team. It's Susan Mills, Kim Dixon, who just popped out of nowhere, <laughs> and Lisa Hi. Hey, y'all. Hey, hey. Hey. Man, oh, man. So... You are not wrong. You are not confused. We are on early for a special <laughs> extended version of Let's Talk Kentucky. I'm excited. You we know? Get to we talk. get more time to talk. <laughs> One of the biggest things that people tell us is, we love your show, but it just happens so fast. Trust me, if it's happening fast for you at home, it's like, <laughs> for us here, it's flying, flying, flying. really, it really is. fast. It goes fast. So we're excited to have a little extra time <laughs> and we need it because talk of the town is packed today. There is so much going on. There's actually so much going on. We had to leave stuff out, but here's what we got. Lexington's annual celebration of the black culinary experience is happening. It is now. Today is the day. This is Soul Feast Week and it is Black Restaurant Week and that means just a bunch of amazing food. <laughs> oh, this weekend, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, you can go to a bunch of restaurants and they will have several meals for just $10. And we're talking about shrimp and grits, but oh. vegan shrimp and grits mm -hmm. over at the Social right. Vegan. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We're talking about chicken and red velvet waffles. Oh, oh my God! Mm -hmm. Velvet waffles. Red velvet waffles. Okay, <laughs> we're talking about regular waffles with some pralines, gumbo, just all of the things that make every that make life delicious. You know, you gotta wear your Thanksgiving pants. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that bathing suit body you made for the summer is gone. It is gone, okay. baby. So that is actually why I wore what I wore today. <laughs> so I have on like this really loose. Really, oh, really loose so jumpsuit. It's really cute. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. because I'm going to the African diaspora dinner tonight. And this is going to be where they have several courses featured by several chefs. And I was like, okay, so the stomach that I have now <laughs> is not going to be the stomach that I have at the end of the night. So <laughs> just don't even worry about tucking and exactly. snuffing. Just go. Got all be the room happy. in the world. Go for it. Exactly. So I've got on a really loose outfit. So if you see me tonight, there is a method to my madness. <laughs> so if you. <laughs> I love it. Listen, I'm going to be comfortable tonight. There's nothing wrong with okay. that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you want to participate in Soul Feast Week, you can head over to their website, Soul Feast Week. Um, they have a big food festival tomorrow over at the, I always forget the name, help me out. Moon Dance? Moon, Moon Dance, Dance. Yeah. Amphitheater. Um, and that's free. All you have to do is tell them you're going by going to their website. They have food trucks, entertainment, all this stuff. It's just like, oh God, wow. so much food. But so you do need to go to the website, right? You and do need to go know. to the website yeah. and let them know you're coming. Okay. Because, you know, if everybody shows up and is like, I want chicken and waffles, <laughs> you know, it's like they're not going to be. They have like two pieces of chicken. <laughs> <laughs> they're, not gonna be able, they're not going to be able to accommodate. So that is happening. That's one of the many events happening this week, and we've got more to talk about throughout mm -hmm. the show. You've got to pace yourself. <laughs> mm -hmm. Buddy, I'm ready to eat. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> okay, now, we have been talking about this for a couple of weeks. Last night, for the first time in 27 years, the Lexington Urban County Council voted to expand the urban service boundary. We've had folks come on the show who were for it. We've had folks come on the show who were against it. Last night was the moment of truth. Council voted, and the vote was to expand. The vote was 13 to 2. That's yes. shocking. Yeah. I really mm -hmm. thought it would be more divided. Like yes. Didn't but, you, but you know, that, that just clearly states that everyone recognizes that there's a need there mm -hmm. to yes. do so. So, mm -hmm. I mean, clearly mm -hmm. that's the vote. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting because <laughs> some of the people who were for it this time had mm -hmm. been against it many times yes. in the past. Mm -hmm. yes. And it just shows how the winds of history, the mm -hmm. economy, um, public opinion, and really the makeup of the council changing yeah. had a lot to do with folks saying, okay, well, I better 
get in where I fit in, get on the train because it's leaving the station. So I said, you know, today will be interesting because I think the developers are going to be pretty happy today. Yeah. Oh, yeah. sure. Oh, yeah. they're already making plans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Already got a plan. They already got, got a plan. And they're now going to implement it. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So this likely means we're going to see a lot of new houses in Fayette mm -hmm. County. Uh, this likely means that uh, we're going to see a lot more construction and roads and things like that, which is not always our favorite, you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. But there's a reason. Exactly. So they have to start, like, work on zoning, right? Correct. And as far as, like, okay, commercial, residential, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all of that. Roadways, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So all of these things, and that that's the fun part of government. We'll have to go through lots of drawing up plans and going through zoning and public hearings and making sure that, you know, these are things that people want, even though... We've said, okay, we're opening up this mm -hmm. area. It still has to be what people want. Yes. Yeah. So um, it'll be kind of interesting to see how it, that all plays out. But I think why I care about it the most is I want to see what it does for our housing values. Yes. yes. Yeah. 100%. Something has to be done. Yeah. Right. So that kind of thing will affect rent prices as well. Can I, be it? I believe that it, it will could. because it we're going to see apartments built. We're going to see homes built. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the argument is supply and demand. If you have more of a supply, mm -hmm. the price should go down. Yeah. I mean, should. people are paying <laughs> rent that is way more than mortgages I've seen. Absolutely. Uh -huh. yeah. And for a lot less space. Right, right. And that's just not good for so many families and I mean, the house a, yeah and the opportunity to get houses wasn't there either yes. and so therefore they had to pay these high exorbitant amounts or they had to move rent. outside mm -hmm. of like yes, yes exactly that's the thing. and people and, and that's not good yeah. for for transportation for a lot of people yeah. you know it causes mm -hmm. a lot yeah. of other problems so that means a lot of people who want to live in lexington will be able to yeah. Yeah. possibly Hopefully. possibly so that was one of the clauses that they're trying to work on council member Denise Gray was advocating for there absolutely needs to be some kind of provision that says there needs to be affordable housing let's yes. just not go crazy <laughs> building bazillion dollar homes mm -hmm. let's get some affordable housing in there um, and I know that's something that the mayor says that she wants to make happen as well so I'm hoping that we that we see the best Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't be mad if there was uh, a couple more restaurants. <laughs> yummy, <laughs> yummy hey, place. You can never eat. have too many. That's <laughs> right. People are going to need a place to eat in these new areas. Mm -hmm. That's right. They're going to need food. Yeah. Well, exactly. And I just hope that the people who may not have been in agreement with this, I hope that they just said, you know what, this is the decision that has been made. Let's try to make the most mm -hmm. of it. Let's try to make it good. Mm -hmm. Let's try to make the, the best of it and, and just kind of go from there. Work together. Well, I think, yeah. you know, it'll be, now we have no shortage of opportunity for bringing all these people on the show to ask. I mean, I want to get the developers on mm -hmm. here. I want to mm -hmm. get uh, our, our friend Brittany who came from the Fate Alliance. Alliance to hear what she has to say. Mm -hmm. We had Raquel Carter on who was a realtor, want to hear what she has to say. I mean, this is a discussion that needs to happen in the light. Yes. yes. Right? Yes. Yes. This is not point. a discussion that needs to happen in the dark where in a smoke-filled room where people with power decide what's going to happen and we all get left out. Yeah, absolutely Correct. agree with that. For sure. All right. Mm -hmm. Going on the record with that one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Love and you. And finally, okay, so our water bills could be going up, but I think for a pretty good reason. So there are these things called forever chemicals. They are cancer-causing agents that make us really sick. They are microscopic, and they are in our drinking water. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, like microplastics and little things that don't ever, ever, ever go away unless you do special treatment. We're drinking it right now. Yeah. Those forever chemicals end up in our body. Oh. And they stay there. And they stay there. So now the water company says, let's see what we can do about this. Are you willing to pay a little extra to get the forever chemicals out? I, I am. I mean, I don't know how much of an increase we're talking yeah, about that's, here. Yeah, that's kind of my question, mm -hmm. too. Well, they yeah. didn't say. No, imagine <laughs> that. But, you know. Can we prorate it? <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, kind of, I'm kind of mad that I've actually been paying for it with the cancer agents in it. <laughs> yeah. What's up with that? Yeah. Right. We should get a discount. We <laughs> <I> know. <laughs> so, I, don't know. I mean, a little bit of money now or cancer treatments later. Yeah. You yeah, know. there it is. Oh, Look, gosh. Kim, you just said that. I hate that, that we have to have this conversation, yeah. you know? Like, yeah. So, by the way, there have been chemicals that you've been drinking, yeah. you know? But and here's how they get in the water from us. So, shampoos, plastics, 
heating our food, cooking it with, in plastics, it all goes down the drain, it all gets incorporated. So it's the things that we wear, the things that we wash our clothes in, mm -hmm. we're doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're poisoning ourselves, because you know. Basically, yeah. Even, um, so, yeah. The body wash with those little tiny beads in nope, it for plastic. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, that right there. lots going on. I'll pay a little extra, we'll see. Mm -hmm. I will too. All right, everybody, stay with us. Coming up after the break, it's the Countdown Convo, and we are counting up the number of dads who are staying home with their kids. And getting healthy may be as easy as forgiving and forgetting. When I set out to build our firm, it was built for greatness. It was built for you. I'm John Morgan of Morgan & Morgan. For over 35 years, my mission has been to deliver more for our clients, to deliver more for you. Today, Morgan & Morgan has more offices, more staff, and more lawyers than any other injury firm in the world. If you or anyone in your family has been injured, call America's largest injury law firm. Call Morgan & Morgan. ForThePeople.com. My tip is, the worst lies are the lies you tell yourself. Like smoking isn't that dangerous. You can quit. For free help, call 1 800 Quit Now. Fact $3.99 is equal to the sum of two beef patties, three slices of cheese, two pieces of Texas toast, and one side of Topsy fries. Yeah, not to brag, but we're like really good at math. Sonic $3.99 grilled cheese double burger and top steel. I'm Rebecca, and you might know me from reality TV. And this was my stubborn body fat that I just couldn't get rid of. But then I went to Sonabello and they permanently removed my body fat in just one visit. It is so intensely gratifying for one visit to make this big of a change. It's amazing. Sono Bellows board certified surgeons use micro laser technology to safely target and remove your diet resistant fat cells permanently on your stomach, hips and thighs, back, and so much more. It feels incredible to look down and it's flat. Thank you again, Sono Bello. I'm so happy. Schedule your free, no obligation consultation and find out how you can get $250 off instantly. Call 1-888-501-7304 or go to sonobello.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Let's Talk Kentucky. <laughs> Sorry. You we can't tell little, a joke and then go on air. Yeah, I know. Sorry. I told the joke, the punchline hit just like I needed to. And then it was like, oh, we're back on camera. So anyway, uh, we're here with the Let's Talk team. <laughs> and it is time for the countdown convo. This is the part of the show where we talk about it. <laughs> Golly, I hate this where we talk about as many topics as we can in six minutes. Okay, so our first topic is actually really serious. So get it together. All right, all right. Pull it together. Breathe. Okay, here we go. Oh, golly. All right. Okay, so stay at home dads. The number or the percentage of stay at home dads is increasing. More dads, more papas are stay at home raising their babies while the mamas are going out to work making the bacon. And this sounds like a pretty cool thing, but evidently there is still a pretty large stigma surrounding dads staying at home and raising the kids. So I know we have a lot of thoughts about this across the board. Mm -hmm. Well, I have a friend who's a stay at home dad and they have very small children. I believe they're all the way from eight to maybe three years old. So um, he, he, he's a full-time stay-at-home dad, but the mom, she's a school teacher. Mm -hmm. That means she does have summers off so that they can co-parent at least some of the year. And being a teacher, her schedule isn't super flexible, so mm -hmm. that's really important in mm -hmm. the summers. And I say summers off, but teachers don't really have any time off, honestly, right, right. but in their non-classroom time. Mm -hmm. And um, they've really made this work. I've seen a lot of teachers that, um, that plan their pregnancies toward the end of the school year so that they can be at home with their infants. Now, that doesn't always work out perfectly, I'm sure, <laughs> but in their case, they have the opportunity to be both of them at home with their little ones in the summer. Mm -hmm. Well, I saw some of the percentage points, and um, a lot of the increase of percentage points came from 
the dads that were staying at home because of a disability or illness or because of unemployment. Mm. Oh, okay. Okay, so is there a difference? I'm, not, I'm asking this question, then I'm going to try to answer it, I think, myself. Is there a difference between a dad who wants to stay home with the kids mm. and a dad who is having to stay home with the kids? I question. believe that there could be a difference in their attitude. Mm -hmm. Like, yes. okay, like, are they angry about it? Mm -hmm. I, right. I think it can make all the difference in the world. Angry, depressed. Yeah, right. Lisa, right. what do you say about that? Yeah, that's exactly, that's what I was thinking, too. Do, do they want to be there? And, you know, what are their ability I just kind of worry and I do I you know we do have motherly instincts that kicked in after we have children and so I worry about the dads that are angry that they have to be there maybe because they're they were forced into it mm -hmm. you know, didn't have a job whatever the case might be I worry about even their ability to really be able to to handle it. Not all of them, but some. And you know, but it's the same with women too. Not yeah, all women. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's home. where I have to push back because, you know, before women could actually control uh how many babies we had and when we had babies, there were women who were trapped at home with a, more kids than they wanted to, or maybe they didn't want any at all. And so I think this whole idea of do you want a parent and do you not want a parent, when you have them, you've got a parent, whether you're the mom or the dad. Mm -hmm. So Interesting, yeah. interesting. Yes. All right, up next, women and aging and ageism. So, unfortunately, a new article has come out and said that no matter if you're young or old, if you're a woman, you are going to face ageism. And I totally get it. When I first decided that I want to be a reporter back in when I was 18, 19, 20, I knew that the business was hard for older women. And so I said, well, I'm going to retire when I'm 45. I kind of knew that that was going to be the, the lifespan mm -hmm. of my career because at a certain point I was probably going to get pushed off TV. Um, thankfully, I don't think it's going to be that way, but that's what was in the back of my head. It really was. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. I mean, I, I feel like women do have to fight to be, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. in whatever job it is, we have to constantly fight on a daily basis to prove ourselves, no matter what age, mm -hmm. whether you when you're younger, you have to fight for other reasons. As you get older, you fight for other reasons. I mean, it just seems like that's the way of the world, and you just have to keep your nose to the grindstone and push through it. Mm -hmm. I've experienced yeah. that not being taken seriously because of the way that I look, because mm -hmm. of my age. I don't get roles that I'd like to have in theater because of the way that I look, and just not treated seriously, and that's a problem. Mm -hmm. yeah, it is. I've had, um, you know, worked for corporations where they went through and offered an early retirement for people. You know, and, and so with that, a lot of experience walked out the door. Mm -hmm. And then they had a lot of younger people who were really ambitious but didn't have the knowledge. So I think as a corporation, you, you have to look at diversity as a strength, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. You need that knowledge. You need the young, ambitious, mm -hmm. vibrant, you know, mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. Diversity doesn't have to be age or race or religion or anything like but just... Everything Every, all of it. Yes. that can that can make a company so strong. Yes, yeah, yeah. absolutely, you know, very good. And mm -hmm. I see and I see a lot of younger girls that are with that are like online social media that are selling things because of their looks, mm -hmm. because of how they look, mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. worries me because your looks are only going to go for so long. That's right. And then you're going to get replaced with the younger models that are coming up, and yeah. so you have to have more than just looks. Mm -hmm. Very true. In Very this true. Business. All right, and last up, forgiveness. We have all been hurt really really hurt how do you forgive how do you go on how do you deal with it well as a Christian you know I think a lot of times we have people who like turn the other cheek you know turn the other cheek and and I got mixed up a lot with that and that doesn't mean accept you know abuse or mm -hmm. anything like that but um, I have had to work um, and go through stages of mm -hmm. forgiveness mm -hmm. with people that have hurt me and I truly found like when I finally got to the point that I was able to truly forgive, and I know this sounds terrible, but I was actually able to pray for good things for them mm -hmm. and for a better life for them. And I tell you what, it was like a mm -hmm. load of bricks got taken off my mm -hmm. shoulders. Mm -hmm. It really right. was great. I was um, sexually harassed in the workplace at one point, and I hated all men after that for two years. Hated them. But once I learned to forgive this, this person, this mm -hmm. man, I was able to see the good in him again. Mm. That's amazing. Honestly. Yeah. 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 Ooh. We need to talk more about yes, that. We yes, we are. That's, that's, that's <laughs> a, that's a, that's a, that's a heavy subject. Yeah. We're going to bring that one back because more needs to be said about that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody, stay with us. Still ahead on Let's Talk Kentucky. Our friends from the Wine and Vine Festival are in the house. They'll join us at the table and then at another table. Ooh.
Next ET, our exclusive Dallas reunion with the entire Ewing family. Memories of Larry Hagman and stories you've never heard. Nobody in the cast knew. Next ET, tonight at 7 on ABC 36. We are Seedleaf, a community gardening nonprofit focused on a bright future of urban agriculture. With 11 community gardens, we support agribusiness and fighting food insecurity that directly benefits Lexington. Recently, we acquired 30 acres of land to provide small-scale farmers the opportunity to scale their operations and provide fresh produce for local markets. We need your help to develop the land and purchase essential equipment. Your time and funds will help cultivate sustainability and community. Visit our website to learn more. Seedleaf, nourishing communities. Confused by all the Camp Lejeune toxic water commercials? Let me answer some of your questions. Are claims filed against the U.S. Marine Corps? No. The U.S. government has set aside billions of dollars for those who have suffered. The Marine Corps will not be impacted. Will a Camp Lejeune claim affect my VA benefits? No. According to the VA, your right to VA benefits will remain intact. If you have questions about a Camp Lejeune claim, call the Driscoll Firm now for a free consultation. 1-800-263-4200. See what you can discover at the last genuine leather company. It's time to celebrate the amazing men, the real life superheroes in our lives. And this morning, GMA is doing just that with our most epic live Father's Day surprise for one amazing dad. Get the tissues ready this morning. See it live at 7 a.m. on Good Morning America. Let's Talk Kentucky is brought to you by Critchfield Meats. Hey, y'all, welcome back to Let's Talk Kentucky. The Let's Talk team is here with John Perdue, the president of the Jessamine Chamber of Commerce. How Yay! are you? Welcome to the table. Thank you for having me today. We're so super excited that you all are having us. So We well, are so glad yes. you're here. Yes, yeah. and you know, we talked about this weekend being a big food and fun weekend, and Jessamine County is not being left out. Listen, we've got it going on this weekend. Everybody yeah. needs to come <laughs> on out to Jessamine County Fairgrounds. This is our 20th year for the Kentucky wow. Wine and Vine Festival. So um, we are super excited that this is our 20th year and we're celebrating actually with a kickoff tonight with uh, a John Michael Montgomery and Walker Montgomery concert, Ooh. which is sold out. We do not have any more tickets for that, but um, we have plenty of tickets for everybody to come out tomorrow. Nice. Uh, from 12 to 7 out at the Jessamyn County Fairgrounds. Fantastic. So, and it's a family friendly event. Mm -hmm. um, we have 17 wineries that are going to be there that we're showcasing. So, wow. I'm super excited about that. It's the most wineries we've ever hosted. Ooh. The event is growing by leaps and bounds. So, it'll even be better next year. So, we're just um, continuing to grow and, and just make it the best because um, that's what we do in Jessamyn County. So, <laughs> we're going to talk a little bit about the wine. And we actually have one of our wine folks mm -hmm. here. So, Susan and Lisa are going to head over that way while I okay. ask you this question. <laughs> so, um, I, the Jessamine Chamber is sponsoring this. Yes. Um, talk a little bit about the Chamber and, and how it works to kind of support businesses there. So, the big thing um, with the Jessamine Chamber is actually I'm the Board of Directors President. I actually do not work at the Chamber. I actually own two companies in, the, in uh, Jessamine County. And we are helping to host, uh, along with Visit Jessamine, which is our tourism, um, and, and the Chamber. And uh, so, we're in, you know, having the just trying to get everybody to come on together yeah. and uh, support Jessamine County businesses and Kentucky wineries. We've had this uh, wine fest going on for 20 years. And we're happy to keep it in Jessamine County because mm -hmm. uh, it's a little known fact, but the very first um, commercial vineyard it is in Jessamine County in the oh, United States. What? First, Wait, I did not know that. Yeah, so oh first gosh. vineyard is was the very first a commercial winery in the United States. Oh my! God. So and they will be there Saturday. Okay. Um, along with Chenault that we've got going on over here, so we love Chenault uh, Winery too. So. Yeah. Well, so let's toss it over there. We've got Christina Chenault from Chenault uh, Vineyards Winery and uh, Susan and Lisa. What do y'all got over there? I know. You twist our arm to get over <laughs> here at this table. <laughs> this looks great. It really does. So Christina, tell us about Chenault Vineyards too, and, and your winery and everything. It's so beautiful. 
you know I've been there several times. Love it, love it, love it. It's beautiful. Well, thank you for having us, Donna. Thank you for inviting us again. We're so happy to be part of the Wine and Vine Fest. Um, we're Chanel Vineyards. We're in Richmond. Mm -hmm. We have about 500 acres. We're in full production. And I brought a couple things to sample yeah, today. Yeah, let's get into it. Let's get into it. Yeah, get this Friday started. So I heard that you're a sweet girl. So we're going to go I with our sweet girl. She is Sam sweet. Fix It. <laughs> We'll have this tomorrow, mm -hmm. and then I've got a Chardonnay. Mm -hmm. I like the dry. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's see what y'all think. All right. Oh, wait, I got to get one, too. Yeah. Yeah. Sweeter, sweet or dry? I'll do whatever. Okay, let's go sweet. <laughs> okay, sweet. sweet. All right, here we go. Cheers. 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 <laughs> and so tell us about these varieties so folks can get a little insight. Okay, so we have a little mm -hmm. bit for everybody. We have sweet and dry. We have some mm -hmm. semi-sweets. This is good. This is so good. <laughs> oh, this is really good. Yep, so it we've got good. a dry drinker and a sweet drinker. So a sweet is going to be Sam's Fix It, our Sunday Best. We have a blackberry. Um, mm. It's called Black Diamond. Mm -hmm. um, then we've got something for... Uh, just everybody. We've got a bourbon barrel aged red. That's this one. Does he want to, you want to try that oh, one too? Yeah. I'll try that. Which one am I drinking? Aged. You've got the Sunday Best. Oh, Sunday Best. It's, yeah. ooh, you can smell it's that. It's very good. Yeah. Now, did you call it Sunday Best because it's got a little communion wine, a little <laughs> vibe to it? <laughs> that, that is the Sam's Fix It. We call okay. that the church juice. The church juice. I'm and then, the church cause, juice. Because I feel like God's getting the glory a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it could be your communion juice. So Sunday Best is actually after the band from here in Kentucky, oh, Sunday okay. Best. They played a show for us a few years ago. Uh -huh, so. uh -huh. How did you come up with Sam's Fix It? Oh, well, my little sister's name is Samantha. Uh -huh. So it's named after her. Uh -huh. Sam's so Fix It. Well, this Chardonnay, sometimes Chardonnays are really, really super dry and they turn your mouth inside out. But this one is like just perfect. Okay. I'm glad you like it. Inside yes. out? Yeah. It's like, they're too bitter. <gasps> and your, yeah. vineyard, your vineyard is like <laughs> up so on bad. a hillside and it's it's really beautiful. I mean, when I first went out there, I was shocked that <laughs> that was there and the views were just so panoramic and beautiful. They really were. Thank you. Yeah, we call it a little hidden piece of gem of Kentucky. So Ooh, yeah. if you haven't been, I want you all to come out. Yeah. So yesterday, no, earlier this week was National Bourbon Day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell us about your bourbon aged one or talk about that. I, I completely messed it up. So tell us about that one. Okay, so it's aged in bourbon barrels. Okay. So that gives it the Kentucky flair with the bourbon. So mm -hmm. we can kind of mix the bourbon and the wine. Oh, wow. Yeah. It is really good. Like you can smell it. You can certainly oh. taste it. Yeah. Hmm. It's, it's, little, it's, it's, it's different. It's so good. If you don't like bourbon, you might yeah. not prefer Ooh. that one. But you can. <laughs> so what is it? Tasty. Can you taste the bourbon? Yes, in? you can? absolutely can. You're really? getting very strong hints of bourbon. And then I'm tasting a little blackberry in there. Uh -huh. Is there blackberry in it? Oh. I'm making it up. <laughs> yeah, we'll just say there is. <laughs> <laughs> don't let me mess up. I, I, didn't, I didn't make it. Oh, so. okay. Yeah. <laughs> little hints of some berries in there. Very, mm. very good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Love it. I'll have to leave this for you all for the rest of the afternoon. We will not. We'll we will fine. not. We're fine. It yes. won't go to waste. It will be completely bad. <laughs> okay, we want to show you one more thing. And so we'll, I'll hold this up so you can take a look at it. Um, um, John, John, tell us about this, this glass. Okay, so that glass is going to be the glass that you receive to do your tastings. Each winery will um, pour a one ounce tasting for that um, in that glass. Uh, you'll walk around, um, and of course you have to be over 21 to be able to get that wristband. So general admission tickets are $5. When mm -hmm. you do tastings, that's an extra $25. You get 10 tastings. Ooh. And then if you want to do all 17, you'll have to purchase extra tastings for a dollar a piece. Okay. Um, but it is a family-friendly event. We have inflatables for the kids oh. to come out. Mm -hmm. um, no pets are allowed. Sorry about that. No smoking. Um, but we, we do have inflatables. We're going to have food trucks. Yes. It's going to be a great day. It's going to be a We've great We've got day. great weather. So um, please come on out and enjoy the day. So it'll be at the Jessamine County Fairgrounds, 12 to 7. Well, thank you so much, Jonna. Thank you so much, Christina. Thank We're you. We're very excited. So Good much. luck thank this you. weekend. We Stay with us. Coming up after the break, one social media influencer is shocked at how she got people to treat her better. It wasn't until after they had done the, the surgery to remove all the toes that it really hit me. You see the commercials. You never put yourself in that person's shoes until you're there. You can quit. For free help, call 1-800-QUIT-NOW. You deserve to say yes. These are my results. I am so happy. Yes to confidence. I'm so happy I just put this dress on that I haven't worn in over 10 years. Yes to a new shape. Look what Sonobella did for me. 
Do you, do you see, do you see this? Yes, to a new you. I'm Dr. Elena Vega. Imagine you could remove this much fat from multiple areas all at one time. Sono Bellows board certified surgeons use micro laser technology to safely target and remove your diet resistant fat cells for good. I have the flattest tummy that I've had in 25 years. I'm able to wear things that I never thought I would wear again. I can wear a little black dress. I feel sexy. Schedule your free no obligation consultation and find out how you can get $250 off instantly. Call 1-888-273-9096 or go to sonobello.com. I'm Kayla No, and I love working at Sayer Christian Village. Everyone's so involved, the staff's involved, we're all a team, even the family's a team here. The love that you have for them is just like your own family. We want to take the best care we can of our residents. It makes you want to do more and go above and beyond. We get your day started in the right direction. With everything you and your family need to know. Protecting you from severe weather without the hype. We're your friends and neighbors, and we are on your side. On your side. ABC 36, we're on your side. Welcome back to Let's Talk Kentucky. I'm Sherelle Roberts, and we're here with the Let's Talk team. It's Elisa High, Kim Dixon, Susan Mills. We may have had a little wine, so this is going to be a very exciting <laughs> what in the world is trending. I just had like this much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just a little. Just a little. Just a little just smidge. A little <laughs> so this one is about something called skinny privilege, okay? Skinny privilege. And it's this idea that thinner people, people who are a little bit smaller, get better treatment in our society than people who maybe have a couple extra pounds, people who may be a little bit larger. And so what made me really start to think about this was a social media influencer who was talking about how she gained a good bit of skinny privilege after losing weight. Let's hear from her. People look me in the eye when they talk to me now. I can buy clothes in my size at any store. When I speak, people tend to listen more. My career took off the moment I lost weight. Nobody judges me anymore whether I order a cheeseburger or a salad. I can literally eat whatever I want in public and nobody thinks twice about it. I can go to the gym without people giving me that face. People considered me unmotivated, unhealthy, and generally just lazy because I was bigger. There's a serious bias against fat people, and unless you've lived on both sides of the spectrum, it's hard to fully grasp what that means. Skinny privilege is a thing, and even I find myself taking advantage of it. So what? Mm. Wow. What a discussion. Yeah. Well, I have to say, I've, I've never been on both sides sides of it. Mm -hmm. um, and But I, I want to know, is if she was an influencer before she lost weight. She was, yes. So when she says that people are now listening to what she has to say and things like that, if she was an influencer before she lost weight, mm -hmm. then people were still listening. Yeah, I, I'm wondering if she got a ton more followers, if she got a yeah. ton more likes, if more people were in her DMs. Yeah. Right. I think those are the things that make a difference because anybody can call themselves a social media That's influencer, right? right? You start an account, you're a social, you're right. <laughs> you're yes. an influencer. Yeah, yeah you're a social media <laughs> social media media influencer <laughs> but what really makes you an influencer is your following and one of the things she said is I didn't become any more talented mm. but her career took off all she did was lose weight yeah interesting I think, I think this is awful personally I like Susan have not been on both sides mm -hmm. but I have seen a lot of that kind of treatment mm -hmm. toward my friends mm -hmm. and it's very very upsetting I have made a conscious effort to not do that Mm -hmm. to not do that. When I go to, and this is true anyway, when I go to the gym, I am not in good shape. I am not in good shape at all. <laughs> Me and when I see larger people at the gym, it inspires me mm -hmm. because they're almost always getting it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, going for it. And I'm like, I, you could kick my butt. You could absolutely <laughs> knock me down right. and run away and get away. <laughs> right. And I couldn't, you know. So I, I, I think it's important for all of us to make a conscious effort 
to fight our instincts when we think of those things. Yeah, mm. yeah. No, I, I don't disagree, and I don't disagree with her. I think that there is a bias in our society. I totally agree with that. But I also, on the other side of the token, I wonder if some of it is just her own attitude that has changed since she's lost weight. Maybe the confidence level a little bit is more attractive to people around her. I don't know. I'm just kind of putting mm -hmm. that out there. I worked in weight loss for many years with Jenny Craig Weight Loss uh, Centers as well as Nutrisystem. And I, I lost weight, but not nearly, you know, I wasn't obese by all means, lost like 30 pounds. Um, I didn't really notice a lot of people really treating me any differently, but that wasn't a significant amount of weight. I believe that she's lost a significant mm -hmm. amount of weight, so. Yeah, she was like a size 18, and she went down to a size six, six. Yes. I believe. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, it's that's dramatic. 12 dress sizes. Yeah, that's, that's about 100 pounds probably. A whole, yeah, that's a whole new wardrobe. Mm -hmm. um, you know, something that came to mind when I thought about this skinny privilege, uh, R.I.P. Maury Povich, but remember he always used to have those episodes with the fat babies, and the audience would shame the mothers for the fat babies, um, and then they would be like, well, Maury, I love my kid, and I'll feed them whatever they want, but we carry that around with us, and the other day I was in the mall, and I saw just the chubbiest little baby, just so cute, just a ch little chubby wubby, but little chubby wubby was drinking Mountain Dew. Oh. And I was like, and this was a little kid, like should have still just been on milk and water. And I, I got a little judgy. I was like, no, come on here. <laughs> and I can't say, I mean, I probably would have felt some type of way if it was a tiny baby and they were getting Mountain Dew, but I felt extra some type of way because mm -hmm. it was already chubby wubby. And I felt like you're setting this baby up for a lifetime of diabetes and, but it's true, when we see things, we get a little bit judgy when somebody has a couple extra pounds. Whereas if Susan's eating a double cheeseburger, I'm like, she needs that. She <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think you, you go as, as long as we can keep the conversation going on both sides and educate each other, uh -huh. um, it, it'll be good. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks, everybody. That was a good talk. Uh, we like to end every show by highlighting a woman we're talking about, and today's woman we're talking about is Gretchen Hunt. Gretchen has more than 20 years of experience in legislation, policy, grant writing, fundraising, public speaking, project management, and leadership development, and she is a huge advocate on the national level to prevent human trafficking. She has taught courses on gender and the law, domestic violence, and she uh, has been an adjunct faculty member at the University of Louisville Gender Studies Department. She does all kinds of great things for women across the board. Gretchen, you are a woman worth talking yes. about. Thank Congratulations. You, well, everybody, thanks for watching. <laughs> Have a great weekend and eat something. That's right. Because there's right. plenty to eat and drink all across <laughs> Kentucky. No cookies.